What's going on, everybody? This is Beyond the Fairway presented by Genesis. I am Will Lowry, and I'm here with my co-host, my co-homie, Douglas Smith. I like how you did the turn, because I can never get it right. I know, I always, <laughs> I always do it slow to see if I can look the right. Okay, it's this way. Got but, it. But it's, uh, it's Derby Week. We have one of the greatest to ever do it. I guess he considered a, as a GOAT, Jerry Bailey, Absolutely. two-time Kentucky uh, Kentucky Derby winner. And we're also going to talk about um, you know his preparation for Kentucky Derby. And hopefully we may have some odds that can be in our favor. Yeah, Hall of Famer. He's in the hof. Hof. Hofer. <laughs> Hofer. Jerry Bailey, man. It's, 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 my, it's my state's f- damn week, Will. It's, this is the this week is that... Week. When you're from Kentucky, this is, this, is, this is the week. This is like the Masters week in Kentucky. The same equivalent, but I'm, I dare say that the Derby's bigger than the Masters. Some people but, will argue with me. It's fine. But that's that's where I'm going. With. Hey, but the way that you talk about the Derby, Doug, I I want to believe you. Like I, I, be, I believe you because the way you talk one. about it, people who come from all walks of life, you know, who don't have anything to do with horse racing, mm-hmm. say, "Hey, I'm trying to get to the Kentucky Derby." My, I got yeah. a cousin. She lives out in L.A. You met her, uh, mm-hmm. Tiffany Tiffany Lowry. She says she make it on her calendar to go to the Kentucky Derby, to. and but she ain't never made it on her calendar to go to the Masters. That's right. See. That's all I'm saying. Like so, the Kentucky Derby, look, the Masters is the Masters, right? But the Kentucky Derby is the Grammys meets NBA All Star Weekend mm. meets uh, the Daytona 500 mm. meets th- the Oscars. Put all that together in a in a town, big town, and that's the Derby. And everybody's looking for a horse race. It's the most exciting two minutes in sports. It's kind of similar to some of your afflictions, Will. Exciting two minutes. Only at the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> well, without further ado, we're going to speak with NBC Sports <laughs> analyst, Kentucky Derby winner, Hof, Jerry Bailey. Beyond the Fairway welcomes in, Will, somebody that's special to me. He doesn't even know that he's special to me, but we'll get into it here in a minute. Jerry Bailey, how are you doing today, sir? Listen, I'm better than I deserve. That's all I can tell you. See, that's a that's a good way to be right there. I like that. I don't so, that. Uh, Jerry, I mean, I don't want to you know, have too much assumption in this statement I'm about to make. Did you just come from the golf course? Yeah, just, uh, you know, like an hour ago. I just got home about 45 minutes ago. And and because, hey, listen, South Florida, you got to play in the morning, basically, because it gets hot and then they get storms in the afternoon. So you're much better off playing in the morning. Also, and, this also goes for uh, where Doug is, is currently <laughs> located in uh, Arizona. Would you, before we get started, what'd you shoot? I just want to know. What'd you shoot? I shot a 77 today. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. That just changed Will's whole situation. And, and, and lost money. Oh, so you played with some golfers. Yeah, yeah. He is a golfer. I mean, yeah, but I mean, you play, I mean, shoot a 77, lose money. That's, that's not a typical Sunday. All right, we're going, we're going, we're going to get into that, <laughs> Jerry. But, but right now, Will, I gotta, I gotta tell Jerry Bailey, I, I owe you a big thank you. And you have okay. no idea what I'm even talking about. I'll tell you why. I'm from Versailles, Kentucky. You know, Keelan racetrack very yes. well. Um, I went to private school. But I didn't have a, a private school uh, earning father, but I did have a handicapping father that always bet on you and Pat Day. So my high school tuition was paid because my dad always betted you and Pat Day at Keeneland, and that's how I got through high school. So I appreciate uh, the butterfly effect that is Jerry Bailey. <laughs> it, it's funny you say that because somewhere during my career, my wife Susie told me, she said, look it. You're not only out there for you and, and yes. the owner and the trainer. There's a lot of people out there in the world that – she didn't use the word make money, but are rooting for you and <laughs> are happy or sad yes. when you win or lose. So it's not just always about you, Jerry. And she's right. And you're a prime example. I'm, I'm a perfect example because I don't know how my dad made those tuition payments. Uh, they were always on time, but I know it was you or Pat that was holding a trophy at the end – uh, uh, when those payments got made, so so I. <laughs> well, well, because it was Pat, you had God on your side too, so you know. That's right. <laughs> but no, welcome in, man. I'm so excited to have you here. I, there's so many places that I want I want to go with you, Jerry. Uh, but let's let's start. I want to start. How did how do you balance horse racing and golf? Because that those are two very those are relationship type of things here, right? It's, you can have a relationship with your wife's about whoever. But then golf is going to take time and money, and horse racing takes a lot of time and damn money. So I got to figure out how you did this. Well, there's two different categories of my life. You know, when I was riding, 
And now that I'm a broadcaster, uh, and when I was writing, I wrote five, sometimes six days a week, you know, pretty much 365. And broadcasting, I only do, uh, I, only, I work 60 days a year, so there's a lot more time now for golf. Uh, and I didn't take golf up until 1999. I was in my 40s, so um, it was interesting, though. I was very successful at Saratoga for a span of about 10 years. And right in the middle of that, I was I, my wind dropped way down. Uh, John Velasquez beat me actually in the jockey standings, and that was the year I took up golf because if nothing was going on at 7:30 in the morning at the track, I was at the golf course pounding balls, and I was addicted. Well, so I tell you what, Wait. Velasquez is another guy, Will, that uh, you know has put some money in my family's pocket. So uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> bro, it's so funny. These are names I have I am not familiar with. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know, Jerry, I, I kind of want to get a little deeper dive into the horse racing and you sure. know the golf comparison. Um, you know. As a horse racer, as a jockey, you had this. There's two variables that you have to deal with. You know, are you and the horse always on the same, you know, I guess, uh, wavelength, so to speak, <laughs> versus myself as a professional golfer and my golf clubs? My golf clubs really don't have a pulse, but I still think they don't like me at times. So, like, are, how how was that relationship between you and the horse, and making sure you guys on the on the same uh, wavelength, so to speak? All right. So, realistically, the horse does ninety percent of the, the work, really. Because he does all the running right. now, um, and, and we do ten percent. And he, that horse usually weighs between nine and twelve hundred pounds, and we weigh about one hundred and fifteen. So whatever that horse wants to do, that yes, horse is going to do. Yeah. So absolutely. you try, you try and work with the horse. It's like horses are like mother nature. You kind of work with them instead of against them, and you're much more successful. But so, is there ever a moment like, man, my my horse ain't feeling today? Don't you know? Like me and Doug, we don't always get along. Like today. I mean, we had a get big shouting mouse before we got on here. So yeah, is there ever like, is there, yeah. is there ever like, man, you know, my, I can tell he, you know, he or she's not, you know, feeling it today. She's not in her, in her mood or it's just something you have to go with and just over override. No, there's a lot of times that they're not, it's like your golf game. You go out there expecting to say, I got it today. I've got it today. And it's disappeared. It's gone. And you don't know why. Horses are a lot like that. They can't talk, and the only way they can tell you is by their energy level, and you don't know that until you're in the middle of the race. And yes, there's a lot of times when, uh -uh, where are you? Where are you, big boy? And it wasn't their day. But, you know, it's funny when we do talk about golf and, and, and horse racing, I find the commonalities very interesting, Jerry. And, and one is just the unpredictability of, of the, the sport. I guess when you're between the lines or you know on on dirt track if you run turf whatever. So my how do you how do you prepare to be in a space that is unpredictable? In horse racing? Yeah, in horse racing because I'm oh, sure okay. triage is in the golf. Like you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So so I was the ultimate preparer because I didn't really feel like I was as naturally physically gifted as some of my contemporaries when I rode. Like, well, so I felt it. I had to outsmart them before I even got in the starting gate by looking at video <laughs> and studying the jockeys themselves and their habits. So I kind of had three plans going into a race. Sometimes I used none of them, but I always had in my mind how the race would develop, what horses would be in front, what would be, be behind, what jockeys would want to move earlier in the race. And I would formulate all that fact so that I could get maybe a one or two length advantage before I entered the starting gate because I prepared so well. Hmm. A lot of guys don't ride like that. They just go out there and, and it's all feel for them, uh, how it goes through the, through the course of the race. Oh, oh, Jerry, Jerry, I, I got to go deeper. Like, what do you mean by prepare? Like, what type of strategic Okay, so, so I would look at videos of the horses I was going to ride. I would look at the past performances. We have a thing called the Daily Racing Forum. Mm -hmm. It's like the Wall Street Journal for stock pickers. And so I would look at that and I would know exactly where horses – when they were successful, would normally be positioned in a race, how fast they would go the first part of the race and the last part of the race. And from video, I could tell, all right, this horse got in a lot of trouble last time by trying to go up the inside. Maybe I'll try and go on the outside. Things, things of that nature that I would study so I could eliminate all the, the question marks that I could. Mm. So okay. it, it, kind of, it kind of reminds me of players when they used to um... – you know, watch Greg Norman in majors. They knew it was going to fold eventually. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Greg. Sorry. Sorry, Gregory. You know what? He's he, Greg's got a target on his back right now, Will. And I'm, 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 I'm fine with you throwing shots at him. That's perfect. <laughs> but you well, know, so I'm going to give you, since, since, since you, you um, are, are kind of like my wife, when I met her, she didn't know much about horse racing. So I developed my TV uh, intellect based upon 
how to explain to her best, because that's who mm, I'm talking to. Yes, yes. I, I'm talking to an audience that really doesn't know what we know. So as a running back, you're in the huddle and you got your blockers and you know which blockers you have and you're mm -hmm. going to follow those blockers. All right. Mm. In a horse race, I look, if I'm coming from behind on a horse, I'm looking at, okay, this horse is going to be positioned in front of me and he's going to get me through most of the race by accelerating three or four lengths before I do. So mm -hmm. I'm going to follow him. And I usually have two or three because as I told you and you asked, some horses don't have it that day. So if, if my planned blocker doesn't have it that day, I have to have a plan B. So mm. I'm going to follow that guy. You know, mm. and so that's how I would prepare. And the cleanest way through the race is usually the most successful. So who knew that you will be paying attention to draft and pace horse, pace car, pace horse in the yeah. middle of a race? I like that. That's pretty, that's pretty yeah, dope. Yeah, not, not too many people would look at it that way, but that's exactly how I, I set a race up. It's funny how you went from from horse racing to NASCAR. Didn't see that yeah. coming either. Will. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, was. This just came out. <laughs> it's a race. <laughs> but you know, it's funny though, uh, Jerry, because the way you say that, it kind of reminds me of of just preparing your tournament golf. Right? Is okay. Is this par five that maybe I can't get there in two? Is it even worth hitting driver off this tee? Like play it as a true three shot par five. Right? It's, it's the way you you went into planning a horse race. The same way people can go into playing the tournament rounds or their their they're hitting giggles, as Tiger Woods would say. But no, I find that. Do you ever use that? Like when you're go, like today's money match. Did you go through the round and pr play it before you got there? Uh, a lot of times. Uh, but but look, look, and I'm an amateur, so so professionals can do that. I, I'll get my holes mixed up if I go too far deep. And say, <laughs> was this the hole I was planning to lay up on, or was it? You know. But a, a good parallel for racing. If something and always things happen at the start of the race, it's never exactly how you plan it. And let's say you get shuffled back a little further than you were supposed to be or had planned to be. So now you got to take a risk. So it's mm -hmm. a lot like, all right, if you're behind and you need to make up, if you need an eagle, then you're going to go for the green and two, all right, on a par five. In racing, if you get shuffled back farther than you had anticipated earlier, well, then you can't circle the field. You can't go around everybody. That's the longest way home. you got to roll the dice and try and get through on the rail <laughs> all the way because that's the only way you're going to win. So, you know, Jerry, I, 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 you know, when I was doing my research and, you know, as we uh, talk about the co commonality, you know, Doug just mentioned Tiger Woods. I hear that you were a bit of a Tiger Woods in the, uh, in the, uh, is it stable? I don't know if I'm saying this right, bro. Don't, at don't the track? Yeah, yeah, at the track. Yeah, it's, at it's the track. Fine. Okay, it's, sorry. It's okay. I, I'm trying. I'm trying. I, we, I appreciate so, it. You're doing great. <laughs> okay, but, so I hear that you was a bit of a, uh, you were a bit of a Tiger Woods-esque. Very intimidating, very quiet. You know, was that some of the, uh, uh, I guess, was that some of the intimidating factor, intimidating tactic that you used to use? You know, I, I didn't mean to be that way. Um, look, look it, so first of all, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm recovering alcoholic for 33 years now. So the first what? half of my career, I drank and I didn't do that well. And so I stopped drinking and then I became very, very successful. So I felt like I had time to, that I had to make up. I had a smaller window than most guys. So I stayed so focused, thus the reason I studied so much. I tried to stay so focused, and, and when you're like that, you're quiet because you're thinking. You're, mm -hmm. you're thinking about every scenario you can think of, and it wasn't I was trying to intimidate or diss people. I was just so into my own mind thinking about this race through and through that I didn't react a lot to, to people. That, that was probably the misconception. Were you, were you open up to admit who, were, who was the other rider that pushed you? Who was the other, other riders that... That got yeah. you, got your. Got so your it, it kind of goes in cycles in our game. So when I got to New York, the dominant writers were Angel Cordero and <laughs> probably George Velasquez. Um, Angel Great was the, the most dominant guy, very physical rider, very wanted to intimidate you on the back of a horse. Uh, so he was probably the, the guy that was the most talented that I rode with day in and day out. Now, there's guys on the West Coast, uh, Lafitte, Penkai, guys like that. But I didn't ride with him daily, so uh, Angel Cordero Jr. was probably the, the toughest rider I rode with day in and day out. Well, it's funny, you talk about the parallels between Jerry and Tiger. You know, we know that there's the Tiger Slam, but but Jerry, you almost have the, I guess, the Jerry crown in, 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 so, in such a way. You won, you've won the Derby twice, the Preakness twice, and the Belmont. But they don't really count. You didn't win the Triple Crown because it wasn't all the same season, correct? So it's kind of like you got the, the, the Jerry Crown versus the Tiger Slam. Like, what do you think about that, Jack? Yeah, you know, look at um, 
I could have ridden another 20 years and not won the Triple Crown. Really <laughs> hard tough, to do. It, to do. It has happened since I retired, but it is exceedingly hard to do. I, I was blessed to just win them all a couple of times and, and happy to do that. Which one's your favorite? Honestly, like this, this, oh, the Kentucky this, Derby. That's what that's what I'm talking. About. I, look, look at well, hold on. Why the Derby though? Like, what is it about the Kentucky the Kentucky it, Derby? Like, it, it first of all, it's because it's this way. important horse race in America. It's the hardest one to win, and we'll get into that later if you want. But also, when when somebody comes off the street and and they find out what you do, that's the first question they ask. <laughs> Did you ever win? First of all, they'll say, were you ever in the Kentucky Derby? And if you tell them, yeah, that kind of like, oh, okay, you're legitimate then. And then if you tell them that you actually won it a, a couple of times, then it, it kind of, I, won't, I don't, I'm not out to impress anybody, but, but, you know, they understand, you know, yeah. all right, this guy's a serious, was serious in what he did. You know, you know, Jerry, is it, and, and I'm asking this question, I guess it's yeah. both of you. Um, Last year. When it comes when it comes to the PGA Tour, you know, and even, even as Doug and I being professional golfers, we always try to target uh, tracks. No pun intended. Yeah. Tracks that tra tracks that really kind of favor our game. Is right. that is that come some of the same comparison in horse racing? Is there some tracks that you just favor that favor you more that you know you're going to do well at? Yeah, you you can't really pick them uh, because you you get on circuits. You know, like uh, these guys play the tour; they play whatever you know tournaments are that are available to them. And so I was an East Coast guy. And I rode in New York and Florida, and that was basically my circuit. But yes, we do have favorites, tracks we feel more comfortable on. And to me, it was Saratoga in, mm -hmm. in upstate New York. Um, it well, do you, do a, you put the links in with that question, Jerry? Because, you know, it's, it's not only the track, it's the length of the race, too, on that track. So, like, when you, you, you know, to per yeah. Will's question, was it a that length is, and the track? Was, that's a good question because, you know, we have short sprint races and we have long mm -hmm. marathon type mile and a half races, we have dirt races. Uh, on dirty sand and then we have grass races they're called turf races on the grass and i was way more successful on the dirt but my favorite was riding on the grass hmm. because hmm. there was more strategy involved uh more come from behind horses went on the grass it's cleaner i mean when you're riding on the dirt that's the reason <laughs> we can't take cameras on us very often like they do in NASCAR, <laughs> because all that dirt, all all that dirt. comes back and you know, we have six goggles on, and then when the first one gets dirty, you reach up, you ride, and, and you pull it down, and it dangles, and then you get a fresh set. And the worst thing in the world, guys, is to run out of goggles before you hit that wire. Oh, my God. <laughs> and don't let it be a slushy day or a muddy track. Oh, muddy. That's even worse. <laughs> hey, Hulk, this is this is just me being weird, but what about these composite tracks I'm starting to see pop up where it's like synthetic turf or synthetic sand? How... how Again, this has nothing to do with the podcast. It's just me being a yeah, sure. you know a horse racing enthusiast. How does that even work? Like, is it, is it a faster no, track? Faster? No, no, no. It's much more like turf racing, grass racing, because it's it's more demanding on a horse, and it, it tires horses out quicker. So the come from behind horses win. But hmm. I never really rode on them. They weren't. They didn't come into vogue until 2006, and that's when I retired. I mean, I've hmm. I've watched them and studied gotcha. them, uh, and the reason they brought them around is because of the catastrophic breakdowns of horses. Uh, you know, these horses weigh like 11, 1200 pounds and they're on legs about the size of your forearms. Mm. And so it's a lot of muscle mass on a structural, a skeletal body that's not very big. And the hardness of the dirt track sometimes will cause fractures. And of course, you know, we, we kind of know yeah. that when, listen, any athlete has an injury, that's sports. That's sport. But when Absolutely. horses have them, they can't recover. They can't immobilize them. So they have yeah. to put them down. That's a so neutral, there, that's therefore, a came in the synthetic tracks. It was much safer. The rates of uh, fractures and breakdowns on synthetic was much lower than dirt. So that's why those came into vogue. See, I'm glad so, I asked that question. Good, good question, Doug. <laughs> so, you know, Jerry, in, in, in going into the details of training, you know, yeah. I, I, I mean, lifting weights, I lift weights to gain muscle mass. Right. Obviously, in your sport, that would be counterintuitive. What exactly right. does training mean? In a, as a jockey okay so, so not, nothing to do with the training of the horse but just us as riders yes. honestly i rode six days a week i rode eight races a day i didn't have time to do anything else and and secondarily as you pointed out if i started lifting weights i was tall for a jockey i'm five five oh, so wow. I, I i survived on about two thousand calories a day at the max and hey. i still i still hey. had to go in and lose about a pound and a half in the steam room every single day. As a matter of fact, I added it up and I lost about 13,000 pounds in my 30 years uh, of, of riding. 
So take that we, Weight Watchers. Yeah, yeah. So you get used to it. I mean, I, now I don't know how I did it because I'm hungry four times a day, uh, and, and, and I have to eat to keep my energy level up. But but we got riders get used to it, and you survive on on very few calories. And you certainly, at least most riders, can't be lifting a lot of weights because, as you said, it creates muscle mass, which is a lot heavier than any other kind of tissues. So, so a guy like me who weighs one eighty-five, yeah. which leg do you want to cut off? <laughs> 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 well, which which roll of fat I want to cut off is a question. No, if you're gonna be a jockey, it's more than that. It, it's, it's more than that. Okay, all right. Well, I just want to know if I, is there's a future for this because y'all talking about tuition payments and <laughs> I mean, dog, I'm really evaluating my career right now. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I weighed 115 pounds max every God. day. So, and, and you know, 2,000 calories. I mean, the, Mother Nature gives you 2,000 calories. I, I know. I know. I, look, look, at, you got to be small. That's the name of the game. I love that, man. That's discipline. But, all right. So, Jerry, you, you've spent a lot of time in, in, in my neck of the woods. You, you've, you've, you've seen the, the, the millions of dollars spent on, on horse racing. You've lived it. You live it. What, what's the state of horse racing right now? I feel like every two or three years there's a scandal or a, yeah. some type of argument. I mean, is Bob Baffert even a part of horse racing right now? I don't know. Uh, what's the state of horse racing? Okay, so that's, that's a good question that you asked. I mean, it it's kind of parallels boxing, you know, and it's been in a steady decline for, for a lot of years. Conversely, our biggest events are more successful now than they ever have been. The Triple Crown races, the Derby always is huge. The, the Preakness, because you still have a chance for a horse to win all three, the Triple Crown. Mm -hmm. And if the Belmont has a Triple Crown on the line, it's, it's, it's hugely popular. But if it doesn't, it, it is not. Uh, to give you a good example uh, of an event, uh, a horse racing event being popular, is right down here in Florida. At, at Gulfstream Park, they have something called the Pegasus. Mm -hmm. a and they've pivoted from making it just a horse race to an event. And they have... They have rap music. They have, I mean, I can't, uh, Post Malone was there a couple of years ago. Uh, Snoop Dogg was there last year. And, and they make it a party there with a horse race going on. And that's it. how they're getting a, a broader section of people to come and enjoy the races because it offers things that a lot of people like other than horse racing and people that have never experienced it before. Sounds hey, like you know what, Jerry, Jerry you, just, you just mentioned uh, quite a bit of things. State of, state of horse racing, uh, Post Malone rap. <laughs> It's going to lead me to my next question. Okay. Where are we in a state of racing, horse racing, where uh, kids from diverse communities that could possibly enter into this uh, this culture capital, ways of social mobility in this particular sport? So, so we, we we need to play to that, and there's two components there too. First, kids, you know, how are you going to get kids there, and then uh, across the board, uh, you know, do you, do you get kids of of color there? Do you get kids that are white there? Uh, I don't know that there's a natural attraction. I know that kids are, are very interested in animals, by and large. So I think the horse itself would be entertaining to kids. Um, okay. But I think you got to do more than that. I think you have to, to, to have something at a racetrack, if, it, if it's only on big days, that appeals to kids that are 16, 15, 16, 17 years old. And that's did, beyond my pay scale to, to know what it is. So, so what, 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 what would be the – and this is me because I'm still trying to, you know, get this tuition stuff paid for. Um, <laughs> so for, for me to finally get into the space, like for, for golf, it would probably be caddy. You know, Doug and I used to caddy. That was pre one of the uh, variables mm -hmm. that got us in a, in a game of golf and understanding the nuances and, and, and things that golf uh, – things that come with golf. Would being a groomer or – I'm about to be funny. I don't know if I'm saying this. Being a – a spur repair? Is well, that right? no, you, you, there's an exercise rider. There's okay. the grooms. Um, there's the people that just walk the horses around. Okay, okay. And, and, and believe it or not, our backstretch where the horses are housed in the barn area, it's about as diverse as you can get. It, that's gotcha. damn sure. It, it, gotcha. it is. But th this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about trying to attract new fans yeah. mm -hmm. of every ethnic background and, and every age background. I mean, because you need the young kids. The reason you need the young kids is they're going to be 28 and 30 in 10 years, and you want to you you know, yeah, plan you, and for the long haul. Absolutely. So uh, I think it's a lot more like entertainment that they're already accustomed to as they're doing for adults um, and, and do something that, that's really you know popular to the younger generation.
Yeah, I, I, I put many of dollars on LeBron James. He was, he sometimes he's my horse, but he just failed me. So I kind of, well, he's got to figure older. it out. Yeah, I, I got to figure it out. And Jerry, how, let, me, let me just ask you real quick. How has kind of the transition from the track to the booth to the course, how's that been working out for you? I, I love it. Look at my, when I met, met my wife, she was interviewing me. Uh, winning a horse race. She worked for yeah, a, okay. what was All called right. sports, sports Channel at the time. It was ESPN before ESPN was was around. So she came down from New York to interview me. So when I got to, toward the end of my writing career and it looked like uh, that I could transition into television, she taught me a lot uh, about how to do it from the other side of the fence, you know, behind the microphone. So I, I got to give her a, a lot of credit. And, and look, it, it's it's similar because I still strategize. I tell people, all right, this is what's probably going to happen in this race that you're about to watch. And then very quickly after it's over, I have to um, tell them in words that they can understand, tell the viewing audience, you know, why exactly why this just happened. So it's very similar to me getting off the horse and telling the trainer, well, I know we lost, but this is exactly why we lost. I love that. That uh, That's impressive, but... Uh, <laughs> I need to know, though, Jerry, from an insider, and it's not insider trading or any type of SEC stuff. We're just talking about horse racing. Where am I putting my money in this year's Kentucky Derby? We the got the Derby it, this week, Jerry. Oh, Jerry, so, Jerry so, this was the most important question. This is, this is why we saved it asked. for the end. Like, I need oh, no, to let me, get, out. let me get my pad pen. I'm ready. Go Let's ahead go. and get so you it. Want, you want this from the horse's mouth. I want it from... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> great joke. I <laughs> love it. Uh, I, see I, know you I, know, I know you guys got a lot of LOLs right now, but we need to get yeah. serious All right, all right. Let's talk jockeys first. Jockey, okay. who's the jockeys you got to look at in this year's race? The one that are on the fastest horse. You know, that's, that's listen, an even better question. A, a bad a jockey can give you can get a really good horse beat, but a good jockey can't make a horse, slow horse so, run faster. So do I? Do I? Is is a bad jockey if he weighs over 115 pounds? No, they can't weigh any more than than the horse is assigned. They can't ride them. What There's an assignment, mean? a weight assignment, and by the way, all these horses in the Kentucky Derby carry the same amount of weight. 126 pounds. But but the jockey, how much can a jockey? Is there? A, he a just said the horse to carry 126. Right, so, oh, 126. So, okay, okay, I missed it. Sorry. So the weight hey, on the back is 126. Easy, Doug. That's the, that's the jockey and his saddle and his clothes. All right. God. Everything. That's crazy. But these guys, they, they weigh 115 pounds, and and they're, they're going to have a saddle that weighs, you know, we have saddles that weigh one pound and saddles that weigh 10 pounds. Jeez. And you got mm -hmm. silks that weigh nothing. So you're out there in yeah, your draws, yeah. basically. So, all so. right. So let's get to your, your question. I'm, I'm nervous yeah. right now. Let's yeah. go. Okay. I'm not. All right. So I particularly like a horse named Epicenter. Epicenter. Okay. And now he is the, currently the morning line favorite, but he's still going to be about five to one, I think. Okay. Four to one, five to one. Epicenter. Uh, <laughs> he won the Louisiana Derby. Okay. He, he is the current favorite, and he's probably going to go off as one of the favorites. Now. Okay. Epicenter. Okay. That's one. Now. We judge these horses based upon speed ratings. We give them a number. The better the performance, it's it's like all right, you shot a 64 today. All right, all right. Th that's awesome. That that'll give you a, 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 the lead in the tournament. These horses run a certain uh, time, and they're they're give they're assigned a speed number. Okay. The fastest horses in the race, on on numbers, are a horse called Taiba and Messier. Taiba named and after Messier. the hockey player. Okay. Mike, Mark right. Messier. And the soccer player. Oh, right. yeah, Messier. That's so Taiba is was trained by Bob Baffert a, ma a month and a half ago. <laughs> Bob Baffert, I, I remember this name. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. But, well, but he's been suspended. He's been suspended. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so he's not a factor no more. Well, but ba I, wait a Baffert's like Pat Riley. Of, he he of trained. Okay. So his techniques can still be relevant for exactly. this race. Exactly. If, yeah. if you think Pat Riley trained the Heat up till a month ago, then you think, all right, the team still got his training in him. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. That's fair. So right. so Taiba is actually the fastest horse in the race on numbers. What are, what are these odds? Please might... let me know he's a long shot. I hope he's yeah, a long shot. Yeah, what, what are odds now? Now we got to talk about odds. He's, he's, six, we ain't there he's yet. six to one. He's six to one. Six to one, okay. okay. But okay. but I have to tell you, he's only run twice in his life. Ooh. So that's so a bit... Of, is that a wild card? Really, yeah, because he, his, he's been running... He's run twice in his life. Once was against four other horses, and once was against five other horses. There's going to be 20 well, horses there's in There's 20 horses in Derby. So if something goes wrong with him at the break, 
Is he, he's going to be like on I-95 in rush hour and all these horses are running. <laughs> he's not going to know what the hell to do. He's going to be chasing butterflies. That's, <laughs> that's, how, <laughs> that's, how my AD, hey, that's how my ADD is, uh, Mr. Jerry. I'd be about to start a race and get butterflies. I'm going to start chasing so, butterflies. <laughs> so, so you asked about the jockey. But he has Mike Smith on him who has won uh, – He's 55 years old, and he's won the Triple Crown already about four years ago. So he's really good. Mike Smith is really good. Mike so Smith. if something goes wrong, Mike's smart enough to help him figure it out, I think. Oh, my goodness. Okay, this is good. This is No, good. I just well, – hold on, Jerry. I need – see, one thing that I grew up on is betting the long shots and hoping that one comes in. That's give how you get that, to school, of course. Give me, give me, give me they, one of them 11 to they, ones, one of them 23 to me. zero. All right, I'm coming. I'm waiting. All yeah. right. I've, I've liked a horse all spring by the oh, name sorry. of White Abario. White Abario. He's White. trained by a guy named Sathy Joseph who's from Barbados. Okay. like the guy. love the guy. He won yeah. the Florida Derby as the favorite, but he's going to be 10 or 12 to 1. That's, that's what I'm talking see, about. See, that's, that's, that's where you get paid. And his running style is such that he's kind of tactical. He's not Like you. He, have, he won't go to the lead, but he won't be too far off. Uh, like you. So he, yeah. So he's gonna he's not gonna have to deal with a lot of traffic. Make it easier on his jockey. Okay. Uh, all, all right. right. You got you got me you got one more long shot? Yeah. I'm sorry, this is like no, forget the podcast. Okay. <laughs> this is, okay. this is okay. this, Will's gonna take this right to the to the teller. Uh, yes, right. I am. So there's a horse named Mo and, and listen, let me tell you too, you can bet first, second, third, and fourth and get them in exact order, and those things pay like twenty grand. Oh, I forgot about that. You yeah, can... they're, they're exactas and perfectas and super exactas and, and things like that. And you can box them, Will. Yeah, and you can box them up so they don't have to finish exactly like you think they will as long as they're in there. <laughs> oh. And you can, oh. Bet, you can bet dollar bets like that. So you can take 20 <laughs> bucks and make 10 different combinations. Yeah, and if it hits, you yeah, can make... Yeah, if it hits with a long shot that you might throw in, it, yeah, you it might, can pay, you it might can make pay bucks cards. You might make $300, $400 real quick. All my problems that I had are coming back. And now this you is see how I got through high school, man. <laughs> you know what the problem is? If you win, you're going to be back there every week trying that's, to do the same thing. That's, a, that's, yeah. that's, that's not a good thing to me. All right, so... <laughs> my dad's right. at Keeneland right now, just so you know, Jerry. All right, dad, so speaking of Keeneland, there's Keeneland. a horse that won the Bluegrass Stakes out of Keeneland. Okay. All right, his name is Zandon, Z A N D O N. He's not a big, fa- uh, he's not a big long shot. He's probably going to be eight to one, six That's to one, cool. eight to one. That's cool. Will's writing all this down, Jerry, like he can't just watch the playback. <laughs> all right, I'm focused right now. Okay, all right, man. Look, look, Jerry. Well, Will, we got to let Jerry go. We told him 20 minutes. We had him for 30. Sorry. Jerry, look, sorry, Jerry. I, I can talk to you guys forever. This sorry. is this is a blast. This you make you feel like home. Um. Last question before you bounce, Jerry. We, we, we send everybody out. You've already named a couple rappers in this episode already. We call it Rap Foursome. You are going to go play golf with four rappers. It's going to be you and four, so you're playing a five ball. That Dead or alive, doesn't matter who it is, if they play golf or not, I just want to know, Jerry Bailey, you're going to go play Valhalla during the week of the Derby. Which rappers are you showing up to the course with? I got to go with Tone Lock. Tone oh. Lock. Okay. Oh. Okay. Look at you, Jay Money. He was the first rapper. I mean, and I am not a diverse (laughs) music listener, but he, I loved him. Okay. Funky uh, Cole Medina. Funky oh. Cole. I mean, we're reaching way back, right? Jay, way back. That's Jay. This, this is before my time, and I'm loving you. I'm loving you right now. Keep going, right. Jay. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Tolo. Low. Never. Snoop, that's, a, that's a first. Snoop, Snoop Dogg. Anybody that can make that much money walking around stoned all the time, he's my guy. <laughs> the genius. <laughs> Snoop. Um, I, I don't know. The, I don't know a fourth one. Well, you said Post Malone. We'll post, give you Post. Yeah, I, know, I, I don't know if he'd be fun to play golf with. He seemed kind of stiff to me. That's fair. I love that's he, fair. he. He likes to have a less of a uh, foursome. He likes to have uh, maybe he'd fit in foursome. Okay, okay. okay no, post, Jerry don't want him in there. Yeah, he don't want him there. I get that. So you know, that's fair. I, I would take suggestions on the on the fourth. Mm. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be Post Malone either. So I'm with you on that too. Is he okay. a rapper? I don't think he actually qualifies as a rapper. I don't know. I, I, don't, know. I, don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know. what about Kanye West, Jerry? You tell me. Yeah, I like I, I like his style. I okay, like Kanye West. We're gonna put Kanye in there with, with yeah. Snoop and Tone Lope. And you know what? From that era, we might as well put Ice T in there. What do you think, Jerry? Okay, Ice yeah. Ice T. Hey, that's Ice a five-some, T. Five-some, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you're playing a five-some. You and okay. you and four. Okay. okay. You gotta, yeah, 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 yeah. You're playing a five-ball. Yeah, that's you, pretty you, good. Can, you can do that everywhere in Fort Lauderdale. Listen, Ice T is even great on TV. So yeah, let's put him in there. I mean, he's yeah, like yeah. you. He's like you. You know, 
But he, but you don't put people in jail on TV. He does. <laughs> well, there you have it, as Will usually says. Jerry Bailey, NBC's very own. Jerry, thank you so much. Happy Derby Week. I want to know what are you are you going to any galas while you're going to be in town? What are you What are you doing outside the race? You got you got to have some fun in Louisville. No, there is so much work to do for me and the guy that sits next to me. That it's it's like every day. I don't believe yeah. you. And and plus, I told you, I, I'm recovering. So I, I try and look at if you go to a barber shop enough, you're going to get a haircut. So I try and stay out of those scenes for the most part. Fair I, I understand. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Well, that, doesn't Jerry mean I'm dull. that doesn't mean I'm dull. <laughs> No, no, I don't, no, I, I don't no, believe no. you. Uh, well, you, don't, you, don't have to be, you don't have to drink to have fun either. But that, exactly. that's 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 fair. That's exactly. fair. But that's fair. Let me let me mark this off the list. Actually, come have a drink with me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no, no, no. I, I still drink. It's just I mean, alcohol. I drink you, water. I get it. Water on the rocks. Water, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. water on the rocks for my man, and get me a yeah. Bailey's. All right, I let's can, go. I can, I can tell you some stories back in the day, but uh, hey, those we'll, are all the we'll, ones we'll, I remember. We'll do that over a vodka soda. Hold the vodka when we get all together next time. <laughs> but Jerry Bailey, thank you so much stepping in you here going you uh, beyond the fairway. Right. Cheers, buddy. Thank, thank you, JB. All right. Beyond the fairway is presented by Genesis Motor America in the first ever GV70. Dynamic design and exhilarating performance. Make the game your own. And I tell you, you talk about the game, Will. We talk about it in the golf sense here, beyond the fairway. But you talk about making a game your own. Jerry Bailey, man. How cool was Jerry Bailey? Like, that, it's, it, he's one of those figures to me that is like a goat when you talk to him growing up. He's a, na he's a household name to a guy like me. It was dope to get to spend some time with him. Yeah, you, you know, um, you know the way we have the arrangement, we do the interview and then we do the, the, the intro and the uh uh, the tag what we're doing right now and just mm -hmm. for the viewers you know Doug said a little comment that was pretty kind of smooth I missed it and um, <laughs> I don't want you to think I ain't forgot about that but uh, yeah uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, uh, my affliction two minute horse racing watch the intro guys you, it was a good joke I just missed it <laughs> but, but uh, it was smooth. <laughs> yeah it was, it was smooth. smooth it was smooth but uh, yeah he, he, he pretty much made the game his own he had his own way of going about a particular race and I kind of you know it it really debunked the thought of that I had you just hopping on the horse and you just going mm -hmm. you know you just going so but you know he pretty much had his own way of uh yeah he's of, got his own strategy for track I love exactly. that exactly his own strategy his own way like you know I like I like the um the blocking and tackling analogy where it's like you got your blockers this blocker ain't blocking I got this other blocker he's he's, he's a meticulous planner and it's why he's one of the best that's ever done it 32,000 times he ran in a race. 32,000 races he competed in, Will. That's crazy. 32,000. That is I, crazy. I was thinking, like, man, he he had to have the most chap chafed legs in the history of... <laughs> just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, he, 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 how many did he have a Vaseline sponsor? Like He, he, he needed something. He, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, but big shouts out to Jerry Bailey uh, coming in here, going beyond the fairway. You know what? I'm glad you let us help you with that that rap force. I'm going to try to throw some personalities in there that I think you know you could uh, you could vibe with. Tone Loke. Tone Loke. That was impressive. I mean, well, he said yeah. Tone Loke, but you saved him, which is it's, dope. He from Dallas, so you got to give him a, yeah. you know, a little credit. Yeah. It's an accent thing. It's, yeah. it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. But Tone Loke, I love well, I, that one. First I just time, know that. first appearance. First, that's a first. That's first a first. appearance on Beyond Me, 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 me. Wow, I hate when you do that. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just, I hate it. But it's fine. Um, uh, hey, let's talk about making the game your own. Let's get to it. Time now, Will, for the Make the Game Your Own segment presented by Genesis. And this week, Will, we're gonna highlight. A former guest of ours stopped by to talk to us last year, Billy Horschel. Billy Horschel and his support of growing the game uh, in a diverse setting amongst diverse individuals and his support of the APGA Tour. Will, we caught up with Billy last year. Let's let Billy tell you why he does it. I think when we play in the game of golf and you see professional golfers, you think majority of us, at least people of you know, similar color, my color, white, are coming from country clubs and, and silver spoons. Well, I didn't. I grew up blue-collared low middle class, you know, it would be a couple times growing up that only one of my parents had a job and the other parent was out of work for, for months, uh, for several months. And so, um, my dad did construction. Neither of my parents had, uh, a college degree. 
I mean, my dad worked at construction sites with Mexicans, African Americans. I mean, just everyone. All they were trying to do is make a better life for their family. Um, and so I think the thing that uh, my parents instilled in me is that yeah, we may not have had the money, but you know, when it came out came to helping people, you know, we offer ourselves. You know, if people needed their yard cleaned up after a hurricane, we went and helped them out. You know, we were we offered our services uh, to help you know our friends and our neighbors out. Uh, and and then I was fortunate enough to to be able to get to the University of Florida, be successful, um, and 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 work my and obviously get to the PGA Tour right after college. Um, when I met Willie, probably I think 2019, I think I met him first time was out in San Diego at Farmers. Uh, we were doing a clinic together for first year of San Diego, and that's when I first heard about the APGA, and then. Last year, uh, obviously the pandemic hit, but him and Kamai, who came and worked with Todd Anderson, my teacher, that did, did some filming, learned more about the APGA and, and the struggles these guys go through. And I think the thing that sort of tied it in was maybe not so much the the uh, minority aspect, but just these guys are professional golfers trying to make it. Um, and if I didn't, if I wasn't able to go to University of Florida or have a great college career, like where was I going to find the finances? to be able to try and live my dream of trying to play on the PGA Tour. Um, but then, you know, when you add into our game to get bigger, to grow, to to bring more fans in, we need to be more diverse. We need to be more inclusive. Uh, mm-hmm. And the reality is, is that if there's a young kid who's white watching TV, he's going to relate to me in playing mm-hmm. golf. And the only way we're going to get more minorities, more African-Americans involved in this game of golf is they need someone that they can look up to on this TV screen playing golf. There's a reason why they play so much football and so much basketball because they see someone, you know, come from where they came from and, and their background be similar. And, hey, they made it. I know I can make it. And right. so uh, and then the other, you know, the one thing that I thought I could help out with them, too, is that. I'm fortunate enough as being on the PJ Tour. If I've only played three or four years on the PJ Tour, I had connections through pro ams with business uh, people, CEOs, CMOs that um, I have contacts with. That if if golf wasn't you know the path for me, I could reach out to them who'd be willing to help me you know my next path in life. And so I thought, hey, you know what? I can bring these guys in, give them what I I get on the PJ Tour of meeting these business people who may want to help support their dream of making it on the PJ Tour. Uh, financially support them as a sponsor or uh, become a friend of theirs, a mentor. And then if golf doesn't happen to work out down the road, they have someone there next to them that they can go to and say, Hey, you know, golf's not going to work out. You know, how can, where, how can you help me? This is what I want to do. And they'd be willing to help them out. Hey, Billy. I love you, man. (laughs) I love you, bro. Like, I love you. <laughs> you know, Wills, it's, it's always interesting hearing the why from the person that does it. You know, and Billy, you know, blue collar guy, knows what it's like, maybe not to be discriminated against, but knows what it's like to, to be a have not and to have struggles, have hurdles that you got to overcome. And I'm so thankful for what he's done uh, to the APJ Tour, a tour that uh, means so much to you and I. But think about it, his, you know, when, when you ask and try to get to the, to the why of some people, you're like, eh, but his is genuine. Mm-hmm. You know, his why is genuine. You know, he's putting up some of his own money to get this thing popping off. Uh, you also see him, you know, absolutely is adamant about promoting the APGA Tour. Anytime you get a chance to talk about it in interviews, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it, it seems like it come from a, a good place. A good Talks you know, to the players, from, checks the players in on players. Heart. And he know he knows the players by heart. You know he knows these players personally. You know he ain't I was checking talking, on I, us though. When, when he, he has it. You know when I finished third in the NBC tournament champions that was held at APGA event last week uh, in Arizona at TPC. Yeah. Um, I I talked to a few players and they said that they keep in touch with Billy. I, I talked to Billy the other day. You know first name basis. You got a PGA Tour player that you know on a first name basis. Like that's 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 pretty much amazing to me, man. I love that. A uh, big shout-out to Billy Horsell and all the people at Fairway Management to help make that a reality. Billy, we appreciate what you do, although we would have appreciated an invite, but we'll talk about that next year. But that is Make the Game Your Own, and right now, Billy Horsell, it's on you. Well, Will, in, in the, you know, we just got done talking to Jerry Bailey. We, it's Derby Week. It's Billy Horsell Week. But there's there's something that, you know, I want to have a little fun about around the Derby Week. It's my home state. So, Will, I'm going to ask you, is it a course or is it a horse. Okay, I'm going to give you a name of a golf course or a horse. 
You tell me which one it is. All right, let's try it. Out. You know, you hate when I do certain things. I hate when you do this. I didn't do it. This is blame the producers. All right, is it a horse or a course? Possum trot. Oh, that's that's the damn course. I know that one. That is a golf course. Ding, ding, ding. Somebody ring the bell for Will because you're going to get absolutely nothing for playing today. <laughs> uh, what about Barber Road? Barber Road. Horse oh, that's or a horse. horse? That's a horse. That is a horse. All right, Will, two for two. What about Useless Bay? Oh, that's a horse. That is that's not a horse. horse. That's actually oh, a golf course in Washington. No, I meant that was the horseshoe of a golf course. No. No, that was wrong. All right, what about Dismal River? Horse. Course. That's a golf course. Actually, a Nicholas design course, Dismal River. It's a, it's in Nebraska. Mm. Have to check that one out. All right, Will, and I don't even know how to say the last one. I, I don't even know if it's a course or a horse, but Mo Donegal. Mo Donegal. So or Donegal. Let, let I don't know how to this, say it. Let, let me break this down. Mo. It's, it's two was, words. Was Mo. Derived of African American name, Maurice. Uh... <laughs> D -d -not Donical. Donical. It's D-O-N-E-G-A-L. It it's a be... black man that owns a golf course in Cincinnati. It's a four-legged horse. <laughs> <laughs> Was well, a black owner that owns four legs. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, but we had to throw a little something in there for you, Will. Get uh, us out of here and get ready for the Kentucky Derby. Hey, look, everybody out there, I hope you got your mint juleps, your bourbon, your, your Kentucky Derby glasses. I hope you got everything on deck for a fantastic weekend. Big shouts out to all the players playing the Billy Horschel Invitational. Billy, Will and I did not get invited. yoo -hoo. So I think we need to uh, reestablish uh, the parameters for who's playing the following year. It's okay. But hey, listen, follow, subscribe, Beyond the Fairway, wherever you get your podcast, Golf Channel, NBC. We appreciate y'all. And as always, we're sponsored by Genesis and that GV7. Go get that thing. And, and let us let 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 us know if you got one, so we can try to get one too. It, it, Doug, it don't even matter. It don't even matter this week, dog, because I got my winning ticket. Hey, you won't see me no more. I might be fired myself. This might just be your show, dog, because <laughs> I might be out of here. I'm Owski. I'm Owski. I got these twelve to ones. I got um, Epicenter and. Uh, the white Ty Bob white white blanco horse. You got the we white. We gotta go get yeah, we gotta go get it. And Zon down, eight to one. I don't know if I wrote it down right, but I know what the hell I'm saying. So did Z. So um you might not see me no more after this dog. I'm about to go be I'm about to go get these horse racing. I'm about to be like your dad. I'm about to put kids through tuition in college off this off today.